but in the going uh, live. Yes. Brady Bunch mode. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Okay. And we're live. All right. So uh, here I am at my desk, you know, digging through my desk to get the papers. Here we are. Aha. Okay. I'm SLP. This is Watch Me Work. Um, how many of you guys have been to Watch Me Work before? Some of you. Hi. Hi. Hi, familiar. Hey. And hi, new faces. I'm just going to do a really quick thing so you guys, so we're all, um, you know, knowing, knowing about what Watch Me Work is. Um, I'm SLP. This is Watch Me Work. Watch Me Work is a show where we talk about your work and your creative process. The title is intentionally confusing. <laughs> uh, watch me work. The me in the title is you. Okay. So we talk about your work and your creative process. Um, of course, I hope everybody is, is safe and well. I'm in New York. Um, how many people are in New York out there still? Still some of us <laughs> with no place else to go. Um, uh, yeah. Um, so um, I'm a writer. I write lots of different kinds of things, plays, movies, teleplays, songs, blah, 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 essays, blah, 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 novels, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm also the master writer chair of the public theater. Um, I've been doing this show for 11 years and we've um, I'm really grateful for the public theater to help us getting organized every week. I only, I used to only do it once a week on usually Mondays at five. Um, public theater would help me organize it and then uh, in the last couple of years, HowlRound, uh, who is helping us with this today, both the public theater and HowlRound, but HowlRound's come on to help us live stream during this coronavirus crisis. I decided um, to do it five days a week at five o'clock for an hour. So that's what we're into right now. This is day two of our first week. Um, thanks, a big thanks, big up to the public theater and HowlRound for making this zoom event possible so here's how here's how it works watch me work is a show it's got action and it's got dialogue action and dialogue um what we do first is we do the action together which means that for 20 minutes and i have my little timer here which i can go on and on about if anybody wants to hear about it um we we work together for 20 minutes and then we do the action together and then we do the dialogue together, which is you talking to me, asking me questions about your creative process. What we don't have time for in this uh, format is um, I won't be listening to your work and critiquing the work that you've written or work that you're working on. Okay. It's more about process. So questions like if you say, um, I have trouble starting, you know, a, a, a work. It doesn't have to be a play. It can be a novel, a dance piece, whatever you're working on, right? Um, I have trouble starting. How do I know when I'm done? How do I get those voices out of my head to shut up so I can, I can keep working? Um, questions like that about your work and your creative process are welcome here because uh, it, it's going to help all of us uh, keep working in these uh, difficult, difficult times. So, um, things like that. What else? What else? What else? That's all. Um, so we got, we got Audrey and we got Miranda as our moderators to help us out. Anything else they need to know, Audrey, Miranda? Totally. Um, so if you are on the Zoom call itself, you can ask questions by raising your hand. And I don't mean physically. I mean, there's a button on your screen that says, raise my hand. It should be under a participant tab. Please feel free to chat me if you don't see it. Um, and if you're watching the stream via HowlRound, you can actually still ask questions on social media via the Public Theater's Twitter, our Instagram, and also on Watch Me Work's Twitter, which is at Watch Me Work SLP with the hashtag HowlRound, which is H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. Um, and we'll get those questions to you. What, if you've raised your hand on Zoom, I will call out your name when uh, it's time to talk and I'll unmute you. I gotta unmute myself. So um, I'm getting ready to work. Usually during Watch Me Work that I do live in the lobby of the public theater, I use a typewriter, but I'm using a notebook today. Interesting, not a pen. I'm going old school. Um, so uh, here's the timer. I'm gonna start it. Everybody ready? You got your shoulders, you got your body warmed up and shit. Okay, everybody ready? Here we go. 
Great. Okay. Start working. Let's see.
All right. That was 20 minutes. That was 20 minutes. So, um, oh, how'd everybody do? Did everybody do a little something? A little something? A little something, something, right? A little just like, you know, you just got, you know, whatever, right? You do a little bit. Good, good, good. That's the, that's the basic idea, right? So that was the action part of the show that we're doing. And now we're doing the dialogue part. So if any of you have any questions for any of me. <laughs> <laughs> I see Melania has her hand up. I'll unmute hey. you. Melania. Hello, Susan. Hi. I'm Melania from, from Miami. From, you're Melania from Miami. <laughs> Melania <laughs> has been tweeting or, or doing Insta chat or whatever on our show for, for, hi. Hey, yeah, hi. good to see you, hi. <laughs> That's so great. Uh, we've never seen each other. So, but she's regular when we do it live in the lobby. Hey, oh my gosh, how great. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank it's you. Tough, they are tough times, you know, and having this is so wonderful. So thank you. Oh, thank you, Melania. So glad to see you. So, do you have a, do you have a question? You always have really good questions. Oh, thank you. Yes, I have a question. I have, I can see my characters. Uh, I can picture them and I have a lot of stories about them from the past, like backstories, and I can know their ideas, but what I get stuck with is when they have to go to action. There is something there that when I begin something, I know that they have to have some kind of desire and someone has to oppose that desire, but when I I find that they are very rich in my mind, but when I go with them to something that they do, I feel that it's very flat. And I get stuck and discouraged. And then I get in this tangled situation where I think a lot. And uh, you know, it's, it, it's the pandemic in my mind. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. Ah, <laughs> cool, cool, cool. So, I so, know. Yeah, so, so you got really rich characters. <clears throat> Right, yes, I really rich characters, and you know so much about them. Yeah. And then when Melania goes to write them down or write their hmm? actions for them, like what they're doing. Yeah. That's when you you feel that it's very flat. Yes. So they get stopped, and I get stopped. You know something. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. right, right. Okay. No, I hear you. I hear. You. Go, go again. Keep talking. So yes, that, that's what happened. I don't know, maybe happens to be usually in these moments that everything is so uncertain, you know, and I am homeschooling three girls uh, uh, and it's a lot. It, I am noticing that it's even worse. So what happens to me is that I think that they have a story and when I get to there is it's a good idea in my mind but i i can get into you know in, in in this situation where they can interact and yes act action something in, yes and i don't know what to do and i don't know what it is so sometimes <clears throat> i get very discouraged about that and i try to lower my bar yeah 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 we talked about that lowering the bar yeah. And I, I write every day and I am here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so my idea yeah. is I, I know that it's something that I have to get through, but yeah. technically I don't know what, what is happening. It's maybe they are very, maybe they are more than persons, than characters, you know, that with a lot of psychological situation that I, yeah. can, I can show or what it is. So I, I would like to know what you think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I do. I have several thoughts. One is, um, I noticed when you talked about your writing, you had two interesting um, modifiers, if you will. Okay. The characters in your head were very rich. Yes. And interesting, you could say. Mm -hmm. The actions that you thought about for them were very flat. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, right. So there's a, so you were creating already a, a you know, like great characters, uh -huh. not great action, right? Yes. Right? Okay, uh -huh. so, yes. so right, 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 right. So what, what we want to try to do is remove both of those 
ways of describing our work for a minute. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Not because the characters in your head aren't are not rich, mm -hmm. but my guess is that the actions you're thinking of for them are not flat. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So yeah. we're gonna right. Talk to the hand. Whoever's talking to you, your characters are so rich. The characters' actions are so flat. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so make an attempt to do that and just say, I have characters. Uh -huh. And now you're getting to the action. How do we choose actions for our characters, whether it's a novel or a play or a screenplay or a teleplay or whatever? Okay. So I have this theory. I make up shit all the time. You guys know, you know, Melania, because you've been listening to the, you've been tuning into the show, but it's like two points make a line. Did we talk about that already with your, with uh, your? Maybe, but I, I, I would like to listen again. Please. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's a theory in geometry that I sort of spin out and make it work for creative writing. So two, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a truth in geometry. Two points make a line. You know, you have uh -huh. uh, point A, point B, you know, uh -huh. And you can, can you see, and you draw, and they, those two points will make a line, right? You can draw a line from one point to another, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Same goes with uh, dramatic writing. Two points make a line. So you have somewhere where the character is. Yeah. So your character is, let's say her name is Josephine. Josephine is in New York. She wants more than anything to... Uh, uh, well, let's just say be in a Broadway show, let's just say. Yeah. So here she is, here's where she wants to be. The line that we're talking about now is a line of dialogue. You see what I'm saying? What a where a character is and where that character wants to be more than anything, I want something, right? Yeah. Is going to help you create lines of dialogue and actions for those characters. Okay, so if our character Josephine wanted to be in a Broadway play and she had, say, uh, wanted to act in a Broadway play and she had no acting experience, right? Uh -huh. What's something that she might do? Go to a theater class. There you go, right. Now, now, yeah, go to a theater class now. You notice we're not judging the quality of your idea. Yeah. We're merely saying, yeah! let's see it now so melania let's see josephine in a theater class right okay you see what i'm saying we just yeah. so we just we just let go of the judgment for right now you're in the writing phase and we talked about it yesterday yeah um anything goes everything grows with uh cyan i think his name was in virginia he was on yesterday and the two kinds you know there's when you write it's you're in the writing phase anything goes everything grows you want to just let yourself write okay okay, okay yeah. we're not we're not we're not critiquing we're not editing and then when you edit you take out again your sort of discrimination and you're going to cut and trim and edit accordingly okay Okay. Yes, I, right. I, I need I need to do that because it's, it's me and my sensor here. Everything, yeah. You know, but not only writing in life. So. Yeah. Well, and also your homeschooling. Who's homeschooling? Oh. Well, yeah. Okay. So those of us who are homeschooling, you know, that's an added like, like WTF? Like what? <laughs> yes. And we and we we all know that the teachers don't get paid enough, but now we really know. It's like oh shit. <laughs> Right, it's it's like, oh my God, you know, it's horrible. Um, but but yeah, we have to we have to. Um, so so Melania, what I would ask is to make a like a list. You, you can do it on paper. You can do it on in your on your computer, whatever. Names of your characters. Uh -huh. What they want more than anything. Just have like one. Keep it simple. One thing for each character. Josephine wants to be in a play on Broadway, you know, whatever, you know, that's a silly, you know, but whatever, you know, right? Yes, yes. And perfect. then what might be some of the things that they are going to do to try to get what they want? Okay. Then you're generating a list of possible scenes. Okay. Right? Yes. And just put them in those scenes. 
and your task is to allow yourself to write and and sometimes these 20 minute segments are very helpful because you know you just write fast try to write really fast you got three kids at home you know right in the morning maybe or you come mm -hmm. to this every day five days a week you know yes 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 okay. yeah I, I learned I, I learned that from you and since you told that i am trying to do it because it's so so good and for me i feel good about myself you know that i am doing something for me uh, it's so great yes it's great i'm so happy to meet you you know in person you know what i mean yeah. so me great. too me too yeah. very happy a joke you know we had a joke at watch me work at the public theater every time you would call in and stuff we'd be like oh it's melania melania trump you know what i mean <laughs> and i'm so glad you're not although yeah. if she were here you know we'd help her too <laughs> that's that's true yes but i am the real one i say yeah, that yeah, I, am, I, know, but I am the real one <laughs> I, I know you i know you're the real one <laughs> okay okay Amazing. Um, so the next person we have with a hand up is Andrew Martini. Hold on, I'm on mute. Hey, I know what you're break. Uh, Andrew, are you unmuted? Oh. Yep, I think so. There you go. Hi. Hi, Andrew. Hi. Um, so my question is, I feel like I've had um, some really great experiences in um, like writing workshops or classes where I really thrived off of the feedback from other students or from the person leading the workshop. And I've been having trouble sort of trusting my own instincts as a writer when I'm writing on my own. And I was just wondering if you had any advice for trusting your instincts or, you know, does it ever get any better? You know, do you start trusting your instincts more? Or, um, you know, just what was your advice for that? That's a great question, Andrew. That's a great, that's a great question. Um, hmm. Sometimes it's tricky for me when I have a lot of like really smart people around giving me notes, you know, um, right. and they're, they're smart and they mean well and they want, you know, the, the thing I'm writing to succeed and all that. And they give me a lot of notes. And sometimes it's like, it's a real old song. Nobody remembers it but me, I'm sure. Like everybody's talking at me. Can't, I can't hear a word they're saying. It, saying. If you don't know it, it's from the soundtrack of uh anyway a movie that I, I will remember in a minute uh not urban cow it's the one with john voigt and dustin hoffman anyway um too many voices in my head you know and andrew sometimes if you've taken a lot of really wonderful writing workshops and you have really wonderful teachers um it's great sometimes they're teaching you to listen to them what i'm trying to teach you guys is to listen to you which is right. slightly different, right? And this is a why this is such a great question. So it gets easier because what you're going to start doing is you're gonna get better at doing what we talked about, Melania, talk to the hand. Right. You know what I mean? Sometimes, look at, I have these little things here. See these, these little orange things. You yeah. see what these are? These are these are ear. These are not you know right. So they go. You know how these work, right? Yeah, the the earplugs. Yeah, right. They're amazing. Um, don't go outside to buy them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you know you own a hardware store downstairs. Stay inside. <laughs> um, and and you you know if any you know you can get them on Amazon or whatever or if they're on strike. I don't know. Anyway, earplugs. They help you. Listen into the sound of your own head. Okay. You got to get in touch as often as you can, Andrew, and anybody else who has this issue with the sound of your own thoughts. Do you have a meditation practice, Andrew? Uh, I do sometimes to help me uh, before I go to bed. I usually meditate. Sometimes to help you go to bed. Okay, Andrew. <laughs> so I would suggest stepping that up a little bit, especially now. Right now is a great yeah. time, right? You're not going to be, yeah. you know, you know, you, you can, you can, you can meditate for uh, what do you do uh, a certain amount of time or what do you do uh i it's a i it's a color meditation so i, oh, I go cool. through like four or five colors and then so they well. they trigger certain emotions or feelings that i'm supposed to oh, focus that's on beautiful. yeah it's it's, okay. it's been a wonder 
Okay, could that be something that you could also use in the morning or something? I mean, would it? Totally. Yeah, it doesn't have to be sleep related. Okay, okay. And is it is it long or is it kind of bite size? I mean, is it like five hours long or is it just? No, it's it's pretty short. Yeah, it's pretty bite size. Okay, so I would suggest. I mean, everybody get a meditation practice going. Andrew, you've already got a, a sort of technique that you like. Those of you who yeah. um, have a technique that you already like, double down. You know, if you only use it to go to sleep, that's great, but you can also use it, you know, first thing in the morning again, and I don't get money for these, <laughs> but you can get them on Amazon. <laughs> um, first thing in the morning, you, I put my timer on, it's 20 minutes. You can do, meditate for five minutes if you want, especially if you're homeschooling right. people. Five minutes a day, you get up, maybe before your kids, you know, and just sit on a comfortable, I'm looking because I have a meditation cushion, it's over there, but you can sit on your couch with an, you know, a straight spine, eyes closed, you can put your feet on the floor. If you can sit in some kind of lotus position, great, it's not necessary. You can just breathe. Eyes are closed, you're just breathing. You don't need a fancy mm -hmm. mantra. You don't need to go to a fancy class. You don't need an app or whatever. Um, Meditation practice, Andrew, will help you get in touch with your inner voice. Okay? Yeah. So make absolutely. that something that you're going to be working on. You can even say to yourself every day, I want to get in touch with my inner voice. I want to get in touch with my gut feelings. Okay? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. The more writing you do, the, the easier it will be to c stay connected with that. Okay? Great. Okay. Thanks for the question. Thank you. Andrew. Thanks. Um, the next person we have is Raven. Raven. Raven, are you unmuted? Yes, I'm unmuted. unmuted. Do you guys hear me? Yeah. Hey, yes, I can hear you, Raven. Okay. Hi. So I guess my dilemma is I, I've been working on this piece for two or so years. And I've kind of like, I've hit many walls, but I'm at a, a new wall, new color. Um, and pretty much I feel like I know like I, I know why I wanted to write this story I was really excited about it and I still am really excited about it but I don't know what I want to say about this and I feel like however I end this play because I'm like about two-thirds along the way and I feel like however I end this play is how I feel about this and that feels very um uh, like I have such a big responsibility there and it stifled me um, in, in writing. I've like, I write every day, but I, I've started writing a bunch of really cool other things, but I want to finish this. So yeah, I don't know. And this is, yeah, this is something I really care about. And I feel really frustrated by um, my inability to really articulate like what I'm trying to say about this person this this person and by this person i mean these kinds of people in the world that makes any sense mm -hmm. so that's a great question raven um i would say how many so you you said you're two-thirds of the way through yeah and you've been working on it for a while yeah i also i had a reading with my family and I realize they, they really like people always receive it well and then it strokes my ego and then I go oh I'm like I'm a good writer I don't need to write it. like I don't need to do anything and but I felt like it was plot points if that makes any sense like you know the like like fluff in between the points I didn't feel that I felt like every scene was like super functional and you can feel it mm -hmm. well that's good I mean that's not that's not necessarily bad but you're not finishing it and you want to and, um, and you and you said and you what I'm sorry I, I said I should should fuck should baby <laughs> there's a right you want to that's what we're talking about now right you want you want to and that's why that's why it's important to you and that's why it's important to me because it's something you want to 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 accomplish right yeah so, um and you say correct me if I'm wrong, but you, you're having difficulty finishing it because you're not sure about what you're, what you're saying with the piece, right? Okay. Um, I've written a lot of things and I'm, uh, yeah, I've written a lot of things. I've never ever 
so far really thought about what I'm trying to say. So if that's helpful, it might not be. Um, if not, there's another, there's another person. There's a quote like from uh, either Emerson or Thoreau or somebody, or maybe neither of them. I know by going where I want to go. Um, that's a horrible bastardization of that line. But the idea that you don't need to know what you're trying to say, or in Ernest Hemingway, here's a better one. If you want to send a message, go to Western Union. So the idea that we have to have we have to know what we want to say, like, like, I mean, here's a great thing I want to say: Black Lives Matter. Now, that's not a play; it's a it's a truth. It's a slogan. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't have to figure out what you want to say, you have to art you have to develop your characters and tell me a story. I do know with everything I write what I want to show. Mm -hmm. What do you want to show your audience, Raven? Mm -hmm. What do you want us to see? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, a lot of times people offer critiques like, yeah, what do you want the audience to leave with? I'm like, you know what I mean? That mm -hmm. might be a valid question to critics and producers and people who are going to invest money to put on your play or your, your, your to develop your movie or whatever. But for the creative artist, I think that's a less important question. I think mm -hmm. it's very important for you to decide what you want your audience to see. What do you want to show us? Not what you want to tell us. Because if you're going to tell us, I think you're better at writing an op-ed for the Times or a Slate or a Salon or something. You know what I, I mean? I, and I don't like any of that. Oh, well, that's okay. But that's, <laughs> I think op-eds are great and wonderful. But I think plays that are, you know, yeah, uh, are a little like, eh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. I think the works of art are much more interesting than that. This is my opinion. This is not some, some rule or anything. This is just me talking. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. I would suggest finishing it. Mm -hmm. I think you're putting obstacles in the way of your finishing it. And I think you need to tell us how many pages you think you are going to need to get done. How many pages are you away from the finish line? Probably like 30 to 40. Great, 30 to 40. So that's 30 to 40. So if you wrote like, you know, two pages a day for like the next two weeks, yeah, would you kind of be done maybe? Yeah. Two pages a day. Yeah. I mean, that's really freeing what, you, what you're saying about like not even considering what I need to say or this responsibility I, I have put upon myself if I think I it's I think it's wrapped up in your need to be told that you're doing the right thing mm -hmm. when we show our work before it's done it's because we need pats on the back don't rely on your family or whomever to give you pats on the back before they're warranted if you were running a marathon right and you're like your your squad came out like Raven mile 15 <laughs> let's have a party wouldn't that be inappropriate Wow. <laughs> you you know, when you cross the finish line, they're there for you. They put the blanket on you and all that. And they're like, you party. Yeah, yeah. But why are you partying at mile 15? Yeah. Right? Girl, you got to cross the finish line two pages a day or one page a day for 30 days. What else are you doing for the next 30 days except staying inside? Yo, yeah. Jan's like, yeah, right? What else are we doing? One page a day. That's all. Just one. Get across the finish. Don't show anybody the play until then. Mm. Keep, keep the lid on the pot. Don't seek praise from like, you know, whoa, do you like my play? Oh, please stop. <laughs> right? Come yeah. On. Come on, now's the time. Now's the time. Oh, look, look, Mo wrote the sign. You can do it, Raven. Do you see Mo's thing? Yeah. You can do it, Raven. Ah, we'll be your I squad. Do it. But yeah. yeah your squad will be dancing with you when you cross the finish line i love the mile 15 metaphor yeah thanks mo <laughs> yeah right mile 15 metaphor or you know right yeah it feels like super me i'm like look this is a great scene i bet i, I bet you could cry <laughs> okay that's okay yeah that's okay that's that there's nothing wrong with with needing a pat on the back or encouragement 
That's why we're here. We're giving it in the appropriate context. Mm -hmm. I'm giving it so that you can cross the finish line instead of so that you stop it, you know, ooh, look at me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. And you're gorgeous. Don't worry. I just did that. You're gorgeous. So come on. So can you do one page a day? What can you do? I sure can. I mean, I'm doing one pages of every other thing to avoid. Okay. Play. So do one page a day. Do you have a printed out calendar, like a paper, you know, just a, you know, you know, online, you can just print out a calendar. With a date. One. Good. I don't, I mean, yeah, I don't have much else. It, to do. It, you don't have much else to do. It doesn't have to be fancy. Just print one out one, you know, one page, you know, one sheet of paper calendar, you know, mm -hmm. Or draw one by hand. Don't make it fancy. Just check and it just off put, everything. yeah, check. Give yourself a check mark if you're into that. I'm really into that. Me too. I like the okay. Gratitude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you go, yeah, hooray. And then you can give yourself appropriate pats on the back. Yeah. Appropriate right? Pats on the back. Appropriate pats on the back. Like my kid, when he says, I'm a genius, because that's what kids say when they're in the third grade. I go, no, you're not. Just relax. <laughs> just, just do your homework, yo. You know what I'm saying? Uh. You don't have to get swelled head. You won't be able to fit through the door, man. Okay. Thank you. A page a day, a page a day, a page a you day. We will be here. We will be here to go like, eh. okay. Yeah, okay see, like, yeah, see, everybody's cheering you on. <laughs> see, look it, look it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank okay. you, guys. Yay. Okay. All right. Thanks, Raven. The next person that we have is Rachel. All right, Rachel. Are you unmuted? Yes, I am. Hello. Hi, hey, Rachel. Hi. So I'm actually a stage manager, production manager type from the Pittsburgh area. And I've been starting to write slowly since I have nothing else really to do. Um, but my biggest hurdle right now is letting myself switch from the management brain to getting, oh my gosh, what can all these boxes can I tick off instead and going with more creativity being more flowy and accepting of that. Do you have any tips for that? Yeah, but I love, I love that you're trying. So you're trying something new, which is awesome. I'm mean, not new, but you know, it's like a different way to be creative, a different way to be yeah. creative, which is really, really great. I would say, you know, sometimes when we try things that are kind of new, it's helpful to lean on something that you're really good at. So you mentioned these boxes, like ticking off boxes, right? I mean, we just told Raven, Raven can make a, a calendar, you know? So I, I think you should, it's funny. They say creativity is all about flow and inspiration and all that. Not always, sometimes it's about ticking off boxes. If you can make yourself a, a same thing, a calendar and go, okay, today I'm going to, and think about your creative process. Like, are you, do you want to write a play? Is that what you're thinking of or screenplay? Yeah, because that's, yeah, I typically work in theater, so that's typically what I know. So I'm just trying to go into like a one act play, very simple, like 30 minutes. Great, great. So let's break it down into what kind of pieces. So we're going to think of having a calendar again, right? And this is something that you're good at already. You're good at making schedules and getting things done on time. We're going to lean on that heavily because that's a skill that you already have. Okay. 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 So, so day one you can say okay i'm going to like free write for 20 minutes and think about my character right day two i'm gonna try to think about what my main character might be who, who my main character might be day day three what does my main character want more than anything you see what i mean and each day each day you're only writing like i don't know 20 minutes you can check off boxes mm -hmm right day four what's standing in her way you know these are this is kind of kind of i mean it's kind of weird if you break it down like that but if you think of really great plays and you kind of break them down like that they can be talked about in kind of a a simple way like that right which doesn't mean it's yeah. going to be a simple play right no <laughs> right Day five, is there like a big moment she has? Like Scarlett O'Hara, I'll never go hungry again. Or Hamlet, you know, to be or not to be. Does she have a big moment where she like loses her shit? What does that look like? You know? Yeah. Who are some other characters? 
Yeah. That's a week. Then you go like day seven. What, what am I afraid of? This is just free writing stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And you can do that with every single character in your play. Oh, that'd okay. be awesome. Yeah. And, okay. you can, and you can check off these boxes as you go along. And okay. see how it accumulates, right? Yeah. Right? And you're looking for that thread of the story to come to you. A character okay. goes, come on, Rachel, this way. <laughs> Story's over here. Follow me. Like that. And then you're following her or him or them or whatever, you know? Right. And it's fun. Oh. That's so cool. All right. Thank you. Because I'm so used to being so like rigid and being like, Hey, stop developing. Like we need, we need to do this deadline. So it's very much a weird twist, but I like it. I'm excited. Right. It's fun. It's fun. And have, and keep coming back here. Cause we can keep talking about it. And this community is supportive. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. you Raven's going to be cheering Yay. you on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Raven. I'm excited <laughs> to see your finished life. <laughs> you go. All right. We've got about three minutes left. Um, do you have time for one more question, SLP? What, oh. what else am I doing? I'm just sitting here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, China, we're ready. We're going to unmute you. Oh, shit. All right. Am oh. I unmuted? You're unmuted. Yeah, wait, am I unmuted? Yeah. Sorry. Yes. You heard me. Oh, well, you'll get over it. Hi. So really quick. Um, I, so I've been reading out loud. I've been going to like watch me work for a while now and I'm restarting my play because one woman show we don't need to talk about that we got three minutes so i want to know the top three checklists for tone for different characters if that makes sense like i feel like when i read it out loud sometimes it sounds like we can be on the same page and we're different motherfuckers so it's like we can't all sound alike i mean we could but i think you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's great to see you again, China. I know you've been, you come China, live. China, but I get it. It's oh, not like China. No, I don't care. It's fine. Hi, it's thank you. For it's China. Sending love to everyone. <laughs> but China, so um, get grounded in what they want. Because, you know, if like you want to go to the store and I want to say your name right, we're going to be saying different things. Okay. I'm going to be like, China. <laughs> you're gonna be like okay hazmat suit check you know wipes check you know glasses check you know what i'm saying you're gonna be doing saying a whole bunch of different things so again like we said to melania you know two points make a line right yeah right? so great. so what characters want really defines what it is that they say and what it is that they do okay. even in waiting for godot Right, they're waiting. I get it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So just get more specific about your characters. If they're all sounding alike, then either they're all the I same person. I don't know what they are. I just feel like when I'm reading it out loud, like the writing is different, but the sound is like maybe we on we we don't all live in the same household. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I'm just trying to understand your question. Um. Well, just get specific of what they want, and uh, maybe that'll help. Maybe. Okay. I mean, thank you. Okay. <laughs> it's five fifty-nine. One more, or no? Are we late? Are we on time? Yep. We can do one more. One more, quick. Okay. All right, oh. Lily, I'm unmuting you. Oh yay! <laughs> I'm so glad I'm the last question. Um, thank <laughs> you for doing this. I love you so much, uh, Mrs. Emily Parks. Um, I wrote my question down so I wouldn't ramble. Okay, so a lot of people have asked questions about their main character and their characters and their, uh, and their voices and tones and it's all been crazy helpful. So I'm writing a play and I do not like my main character. Like I love, like he's just the fucking worst. Like he's, I feel like, you know, I'm, is it, I feel like maybe too preachy. I think you were saying that. And I'm wondering if he's, he's interesting so I don't 
think that he's one dimensional, but I feel like I'm like getting that like, I hate men, sort of like <laughs> anger and aggression out on this, this character. And he's sort of becoming internalizing like all of that. But I, I feel like, it, yeah, maybe a little one dimensional. And I'm just curious as to how I can like take that character and allow for him to exist in a way that's real instead of one dimensional as in like, yeah, like he is this person or he represents this versus, yeah, that makes sense. Right, we're right. Like like you wanna do maybe what, you know, I don't know, Shakespeare did with Richard III, make him like, wow, cool guy. Have yeah. you, have you, have you, um, well, no two things, Lily. One, he's a, they, he, they're a part of you. Okay. Okay, because where else is it coming from? Mm -hmm. And have compassion for that part of you. That's two things. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, and three, walk around in their shoes. Be them. Get out, get out, get out of yourself and be your characters. You gotta be your characters. If, you know, um, so you're gonna be this character that you don't like, but there are gonna be things about them, him, that you find likable i mean everyone what's that that line everyone's a hero in their own in you know everyone's a hero in their own mind you know mm. i mean we can think of some ridiculous people on the public stage not the public theater stage yo but the public <laughs> world stage right now and hey, you man, know you it. know the crazy yo motherfucker think to be the hero and, and if you if he were in a play you know there'd be something about him that mm. would be like huh interesting because while there is no i in team there is a me in enemy hmm. mm. yeah and what a lovely place to end watch me work today i knew i would get to fit that in somewhere <laughs> thank you amazing and if you want us as a reminder if you want to sign up for the rest of our sessions you can look at publictheater.org and you can click on watch me work and we've got signups for the rest of the week we'll release more signups on friday thank you guys thank you you've made my day fun i know i can't wait to... <laughs> thank you see you tomorrow those of you can make it thank you wash your hands <laughs> wash your hands wash your hands don't touch your face don't touch your face don't touch your face don't touch your face moisturize wash your hands moisturize <laughs> and write get your work done yeah. one page a day